St. Clair is believed to have been born on July 16, 1194, in Assisi. While there is uncertainty to the exact date of her birth, there is no question to the fact that she was the oldest of three girls of the wealthy Ofriduccio family. There was nothing extraordinary of her early years. Claire, along with her sisters, enjoyed the life of a rich family of the times. Claire spent her youthful days learning music, fine embroidery, and how to entertain guests at social gatherings. A woman of Claire's status had no need of cooking skills, since she would always have servants in the kitchen. Claire's mother, Ortolana, was very religious and taught all her children about Jesus and the importance of Sunday Mass and prayer. Claire's father, Favarone, was happy about the beautiful and gentle woman she was becoming. By her 17th year, he had found her a wealthy man to be her husband. Claire seemed to be the luckiest girl in the world. She had it all, but she did not feel as happy and peaceful as she thought she should. There were many poor people in Assisi and the surrounding towns, and this at times disturbed her. While growing up, Claire was very popular at the parties held for the wealthy young people of Assisi. No doubt she first met St. Francis at such an event before he left all worldly goods behind. While she looked happy and outgoing on the outside to everyone, she was deeply religious inside. As a young girl, Claire dedicated herself to prayer. Even as a child, Claire had a special friendship with Jesus. She loved to pray and to do holy things for him. But it was the preaching and example of a young Francis during Lent of 1212 that gave the 18-year-old Claire a path for her life. Francis, who was several years older than Claire, had also grown up in a wealthy, important family in Assisi. He had given all of that up, following the instruction of Jesus to the rich young man in the Gospel. If you wish to be perfect, go. Sell your possessions and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. At first, the people of Assisi thought he was crazy. But over time, as they saw his joy and happiness, and his kindness to the poor and to all creatures, they began to admire him, calling him Poverello, the poor little one. Many of the young people of the area were attracted to his way of life, and before long, a little band of young men had gathered around him. This message and the tremendous joy that Francis and his followers demonstrated challenged Claire to think about her own life. She found Francis and his brothers to be filled with more peace than her father and uncles, who were some of the most successful men in Assisi but they were always worried about someone or something. Claire's father had made plans for his beautiful daughter to marry a rich young nobleman. But Claire, who had given her heart completely to Jesus as a young teenager, was determined not to marry. Claire knew her father, who had a stubborn streak and a hot temper, would not grant her wish easily. I... I am confused. I do not want to marry anyone. I belong to Jesus and Jesus alone. One day, Claire met Francis and they started chatting. Claire and Francis spoke about a lot of things that night. They spoke of the beauty of poverty, caring for the poor and sick, and living like Jesus. She then knew what she wanted to do with her life. On Palm Sunday of 1212, Claire decided to elope, not with the man to whom her family promised her, but to Jesus. Wearing her best dress and jewelry, she went to the Portiancula, 
where Francis and his followers held lighted candles and sang the psalms. There, Claire Offerduccio promised her life to Jesus. She removed her wealthy clothes and jewels, and embracing poverty, put on a rough gray robe and wooden sandals. Then, St. Francis himself cut off Claire's long and beautiful hair as she renounced the world. Because she was the first woman to follow Francis, and there was no place for her to stay, Francis directed her to live with a group of Benedictine sisters, where she would learn about convent life and living in community. Her father was so enraged when he discovered that Claire had become a nun, he rounded up his best knights and rode straight away to the Benedictine monastery where Claire and Pacifica were staying. Shouting and cursing, he stormed into the chapel where Claire was praying. You have given your allegiance to that young troublemaker, Francis, rather than obeying me, your father. No, father, I have given my allegiance to Christ. Francis only showed me the way. At that, the exasperated count grabbed Claire to drag her home. But Claire grabbed hold of the altar and would not let go. It was then that the veil dropped and everyone saw Claire's cropped hair. They just stood there stunned, trying to grasp the gravity of the situation. After several attempts, her father decided to leave her and went back. Claire's sister, Katerina, who took the name Agnes, joined her at this monastery. The two remained there until a separate dwelling was built for them next to the church of San Damiano. Over time, other women joined them, wanting to also be brides of Jesus and live with no money. They became known as the Poor Ladies of San Damiano. Francis appointed Claire as the women's superior in 1215. They all lived a simple life of austerity, seclusion from the world, and poverty, according to a rule which Francis gave them as a second order. St. Clair and her sisters wore no shoes, ate no meat, lived in a poor house, and kept silent most of the time. Their lives consisted of manual labor and prayer, yet they were very happy because our Lord was close to them all the time. As tough and extreme as their lives were, it did not stop the community from growing in numbers. Many from all over Europe came to Assisi and were moved by the prayer and joyful spirit of Claire and her sisters. Some, in turn, returned home and founded convents of poor Claire's in their own towns and cities. One story of the power of St. Clair's prayer regards the invasion by an army of rough soldiers. One night, a group of soldiers surrounded Assisi. They made their way to the city they first encountered, San Damiano, the convent where Claire and her sisters lived because it was outside the city walls. As the warriors approached, Claire's sisters panicked and roused Claire from her sickbed. She took the monstrance from the chapel with the consecrated host and showed it to the attackers. O oh Lord, protect these sisters whom I cannot protect now. Upon seeing Claire holding the blessed sacrament, the enemy first froze in their tracks. At that moment, a sudden fright struck the attackers. And then, gripped with a feeling of terror, they began to retreat. They never returned again. While serving as the leader of her order, Claire defended them from the attempts of prelates to impose a rule on them that more closely followed the rule of Saint Benedict than Francis. Claire was so devoted and dedicated to Francis 
that she was often referred to as Alter Franciscus, or another Francis. She encouraged and aided a man she saw as a spiritual father figure and took care of him as he grew old. Following Francis's death, Claire continued to promote her order, fighting off every attempt from each pope trying to impose a rule on her order that would water down their radical commitment to corporate poverty. During Christmas in 1252, her last on earth, Claire was not well enough to go to midnight mass at the church of St. Francis with her sisters and the friars. She became very lonely and began to cry. Then, realizing that her lonely cell was better lodging than what Mary and Joseph had, she began to meditate on the Christmas mystery. Suddenly, her cell burst into light. Her cell walls were shaken by the sound of a great organ, and she was able to see the Church of St. Francis ablaze with candles. She watched the celebrant ascend the altar and participated at Mass, listening to the beautiful chants. It was like God, in His loving tenderness, had brought church to her. On August 9, 1253, Pope Innocent IV declared Clare's rule would serve as the governing rule for Clare's order of poor ladies. Word of their radical life spread through the land. Clare was so renowned for her holiness that the Pope and countless others came to her deathbed. In the midst of her sisters and three friars, she died on August 11, 1253. Claire is often pictured carrying a monstrance or pyx to commemorate the time she warded off the soldiers at the gates of her convent with the Blessed Sacrament. St. Clare's Feast Day is celebrated on August 11th.